Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing great today. In today's video, we are going to look at how to start and stop the listener. Now, the listener is actually what receives client connections to the database. Okay, It receives requests for connection from clients and then it passes the same request to the database checking if all parameters are correct and accurate. Before we go into the practical of this lecture, I'd like you to work with me while I show you the location of um, the listener configuration file. Okay, I've just opened um, the Oracle home directory and then I'll go to other locations and then come to computer. And then the next thing I want to do is to look for U01 app Oracle product 12 and then db underscore one now when you get to this place look for a folder known as network and then open admin now you can see that we have quite a number of files but i want you to take note of this one listener.ora okay i'm going to try to open with the text editor so you see the content of the file now this is actually the listener configuration file. The first thing you would have observed is the protocol used in connecting. So the protocol type is actually TCP. And then the host is testdb.com. And then the default port for the listener is 1521. So anybody that tries to connect to the database, okay, using these parameters, mostly the host name and then the port number, as long as the entries are correct, the connection to the database will be successful, provided you have an account created for you in your database. Okay, so now that we've seen the listener configuration file, there's another file I want us to look at, which is the TNS names.ora. Okay, now this TNS names.ora carries the entry that has to do with your database and pluggable database perhaps maybe in your own entry in your own file you might not have this particular entry orcl pdb because i i was the one that added it for each pluggable database you create you must include the entry in the tns names.ora file so that will enable client connection to the pluggable database as well so you can see that we have um, the container database ORCL, and then with the connection protocol, the host name, and then the default port. So anybody that connects to this database, I mean, with required privileges, okay, and supplies these parameters will actually be authenticated by the database. And then anybody that is created within this pluggable database and supplies these parameters will actually have access to the database as long as you have an account created for you in the database. Okay, so enough of these files. Let's go to the practical session and then let's look at what, you know, the, the listener operation is like. Now, the first thing you should understand is the fact that the user sys can actually connect to the database with or without the listener up and running. So for the user sys, he does not necessarily need the listener to be up for him to gain access to the database. I'll prove that to you in one minute. Now, um, if I check the listener status, you will see TNS00511 error, no listener. That's because the listener is not up and running, okay? From the listener, status page you can see that the listener is not up and running but if i try to connect as the sysdba you see that the connection will be successful so sql plus slash as sysdba once i enter you see that i'm connected to the database instance already okay but the database instance is not up and running in this case as well so for me to get it to be up and running i have to start it up but that's not where I'm going yet. So let me just exit this and then clear my screen. Okay, so I just 
prove to you that the DBA can actually, the SysDBA rather, can actually connect to the database with or without the listener running. So let me connect again as the SysDBA. And then let me try to start up the database. Okay, so our database is up and running now. Let me quickly exit this and then try to start the listener, okay? So the command to start the listener is lsnrctl space start. Now, you can see that the listener is up, but look at this. The listener supports no services, uh, but I just started the database. So the database services should be registered with the listener. But how come the listener supports no services? Well, I'll explain to you. Now, there's a background process known as LREG, okay, L-R-E-G, which is responsible for the listener. And this LREG normally needs about 60 seconds for it to register all of the services that are associated with a particular database or pluggable database, okay? But there's a way you can actually bypass this process but then before we go into that i just want us to wait for 60 seconds okay so um is way past 60 seconds now let's look at the status of the listener again by executing the command listener space status so if i press this you see right now that it has now started supporting the services it has registered all the services that are associated with this particular database the first thing you will observe is this service, orucl.com, okay? This particular one, orucl.com, which is actually um, for the container database, orucl. And then the next one you will observe is orucl.pdb.com, okay? Which is actually for the pluggable database, orucl.pdb, okay? So... Now that the services have been registered, okay, you can go ahead and then establish connections to your pluggable database and to you know every other database that is registered with the listener services. Okay. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to bypass that 60 seconds rule by the listener registration services. Okay. So to be able to bypass that. I'll log in as the sysdba again, and then I'll issue the command alter system register. So if you issue this command, you won't have to wait for 60 seconds for the LREG process, okay? This will bypass it and go ahead to forcefully register all the services that are associated with the listener, okay? So if I execute this command, Oh, sorry, I have to terminate it by semicolon. You can see system altered. Okay, that means we don't have to wait for 60 seconds again for the LREG process. Okay, so I'll quickly exit this. And then to stop the listener, I'm going to type the command lsnrctl space stop. And then you can see the command completed successfully. So the listener has been stopped successfully. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this video was interesting to you. If it was, kindly like it and share it widely. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I upload another valuable content. And I'll see you in my next video with another exciting topic. Bye for now.